We're going to cover Lab G of the Temperature Control Lab, where we're going to implement a nonlinear model predictive controller. Now, in this exercise, we first of all need to get updated parameters for our model and estimate our model, and then we'll use that same model in our controller. Now, in this case, uh, you know, as opposed to Lab F, we are going to be using some nonlinear correlations to describe the temperature response of our lab. We'll implement those directly in our controller. So here's some parameter values that I came up with. And the ones that I estimated are listed here in blue for my heater gains and also my overall heat transfer coefficient. And then also a time constant, empirical time constant. So I did some step tests with my heaters and then saw what the response was for my temperature response and then fit it using these four equations. So two energy balances and then two that are empirical. So I call this a semi-empirical model because it combines a first principles approach and also some empirical correlations as well. So I'll show you how to do that and then we'll jump into the model predictive controller. So here's just a few uh, you know, additional instructions for you as you work through this lab. The challenging part of this is that now we're dealing with nonlinear correlations instead of uh, just purely linear correlations. Okay, so the parameter estimation exercise is here. You can see you know, where I got my parameters from. I'm also going to run this again and just see if we get you know slightly different parameters. But the main thing is that we have to perturb our heater values, okay, and make them do several steps throughout and then we'll see the response and then we're going to try to fit our data and our model together by adjusting those parameters so that's a first step is obtain a good model that fits the system well and then we'll implement that model as a controller okay and then some of the things to think about uh, we'll go through this uh, a little bit more but uh, you know what's the performance difference between the nonlinear MPC this lab and the linear MPC, which was lab F or the previous lab, and do the nonlinear correlations significantly improve the performance over the linear model? And some things to consider in the trade off is the trade off between computational cost, solve time, and also the um, you know the accuracy that we get. Okay, and uh, sometimes nonlinear models are going to fail to converge. And so think about some backup measures that you'd suggest for the application that might fail intermittently, especially if this is a critical application. And then um, one possible way to deal with nonlinear systems is to locally linearize a system. And so there's advantages and disadvantages to this approach. So just think about that. You know, do, would you want to linearize this frequently and then use that linear representation or just use the full nonlinear model? Okay, so the place to go to start for this, if you want to just download the files, um, is going to be from the Dynamic Optimization website. And we're just going to scroll down to Arduino Lab. And the files are here on GitHub. But let's first of all come down here to Lab G. This is the description of this lab so you can download this and look at it and uh, also lab E is where we developed our model the hybrid model estimation so make sure you use the parameters in model that you estimated from that <clears throat> so let's just go ahead and review what we did on lab E first of all if you go to TC lab you can go to regression okay let me go back to that just to share okay number two regression and then in here, we have a number of different uh, model forms. We're going to be using the hybrid MIMO. Okay, and then there's a MATLAB and then Python Gecko as well. So if you download this or retrieve the repository, you can come in here to regression and then hybrid MIMO. And I'll do this in MATLAB first, and then we'll do it in Python next. Okay, we should get the same answer both ways. Just as that's opening up, I'll go ahead and run it in Python. 
So we have our data file. The very first thing you need to do is run the generate data.py and that will generate a data.txt file for you. And then you run this estimation script and there you can see the model and measured values, the predicted or measured, and there you can see the Q values as well. Okay, so this takes about 10 minutes to generate the data. I ran it for about 600 seconds with several steps there in the Q values. Those are random steps. Okay, we also get the same thing from the MATLAB version of it. There's also a generate data script that will help you generate some of the data. And there's the new parameters that we came up with. And there you can see the fit. Okay, so that's it for the MATLAB and the Python to generate the model parameters that we want. Now we're going to go into the controller. So we're going to update our controller with some of those parameters and then run it. This is going to be under the second order nonlinear. And there's a Gecko, MATLAB. You know, the Gecko is also Python. Um, then there's MATLAB and then APM Python. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and then we'll talk about uh, what's happening in the script after it starts running. So this is the nonlinear model predictive controller that's running in Gecko. You can also run it in MATLAB or Simulink. <coughs> okay, if you get that message at the top, there's a new firmware that's available from Jeff Cantor. Okay, so we're going to have the set point. It's going to be up at 35 initially <coughs> for you know the temperature 1. I'm just going to move this over. Both the heater 1 and the heater 2 went up to 100% on their output. So it's going to start climbing, and then we'll see uh, what it does as it, uh, as it goes. Okay, So I'm going to put this over to the side, and I'll just put it right up here and drag this down a little bit. Okay, let me see if I can get this. Uh... Okay, I'm going to just resize this window. Make it a little bit bigger. Sometimes the plot is a little bit unresponsive uh, because it's, you know, it's trying to replot uh, frequently. Okay, um, but let me go through the code just as this uh, is is uh, going through this and just how we set up the controller. Okay, so we're going uh, to connect. We need to first of all import TC Lab, and then we'll connect to the Arduino with this command. Uh, we'll get the current version. Tur just turn on the LED to let people know it's hot. Run for five minutes and we're going to run every three seconds so that's going to be five times twenty and that'll give us the number of loops that we're going to go through we're just going to have some storage for our plotting right here and then we're also going to have some set point changes you could schedule more set point changes in there if you'd like um, I'm just having some storage for the heater value and then uh, this is actually we're going to initialize the model this is actually a controller Okay, so you can take off that comment. And uh, it's called tclab-mpc. You can call that whatever you'd like as well. Here's our time horizon for our controller. We're going to be going out to 60 seconds. The one thing that's important is just that first time interval is going to be equal to 3. Okay, and then beyond that, you can put whatever you'd like. So this could also be your time horizon right there. It's just that first time interval needs to be equal to 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and just restore that back. Okay, and then we have our parameters. These are the ones that uh, you know we would update from our parameter estimation. So don't forget to put those new values in there. And um, you can also have... Okay, we also have some other values in here as well. I don't think we need these right here. Okay, those are just extras left over uh, from a prior one. Okay, and then uh, here are manipulated variables. 
right here, the Q1 and Q2. And then we have our TC1 and TC2. And then our heater temperature as well. Okay, don't forget to update the ambient temperature if you estimated that one. And that one is in Kelvin. Okay, and then we have our equations, our energy balance. These are empirical, or sorry, these are first principles, and then these would be the empirical correlations right there. And then we have some options, like uh, this is a model predictive controller. And we're going to use a L1 norm objective function, number of nodes, and the IP op solver. We're going to create our figure, and then start the main loop. You need to update this if you change the cycle time of the controller. If you just change that first time interval of the controller, you also need to update the sleep max. That helps it be real time. Okay, and then we're going to read the temperatures in Kelvin. The rest of this is just keeping track of the time, making sure each loop happens every three seconds. We're going to read the temperatures and then implement our controller here. We're going to insert the measurements. We're going to update the set point high or set point low. Those were defined up above the TSP1 and TSP2. Okay, uh, we're going to solve it. We're going to say don't display the solver output, so display equals false. And then if it was solved successfully, we're, app status equals 1, we're going to retrieve the Q values. Those are the heater values. And if not, we'll just turn off the heater values. So this is something to consider. You know, it catches if the application was unsuccessful and then goes to a fail-safe state. Okay, here's our writing of the output to the Arduino. And then the rest of it's just plotting. Okay, we're going to create these plots that you see, and then we'll turn off, um, turn it off at the very end. Okay, so you can see our model predictive controller right now. It went for five minutes, and it was able to make it to the set points. You can adjust the tuning if you'd like, make it a little bit faster or slower. Uh, you know, more aggressive or less aggressive. The other thing to consider is that the Q1 and Q2 values here, uh, you know, you see a lot of fluctuation in those. And so for certain systems, like where there's a valve or a pump, you don't necessarily want to turn on or off the valve or the pump, uh, you know, close it or shut it, close it or open it, or, uh, you know, turn it on or shut it off very rapidly in succession. So also think about how to do MV or CV tuning in order to have less fluctuation of your manipulated variable if you need that. Okay, so this is an example of you know solving this system. We had you know, these nonlinear equations. It was a nonlinear model predictive controller because we had you know terms like temperature to the fourth. We are to keep track of the radiative heat transfer in addition to the convection. Uh, so, you know, it looked like it ran uh, fairly quickly. Uh, you might be able to reduce the cycle time even further if you have a fast internet connection or if you want to solve it locally without the internet connection, you can also do uh, remote equals false. And then that will solve it without an internet connection and I'll be local to you. Okay, so um, this is our nonlinear model predictive controller. I'll just go back to the lab and give an overview of where we're going next with this. We have one more lab in the series and that's going to be combining the nonlinear model predictive controller with a moving horizon estimator. So if we come down Lab H is going to be moving horizon, moving horizon estimation with model predictive control. And we're going to combine the two so that it updates the model real time and then performs the control calculation. So looking off into the future, what we're going to be doing is right now we had a model predictive controller that was adjusting the heater values. Okay, Q1 and Q2. Okay, to try to meet certain uh, target reference trajectories. 
Okay, that'd be like temperature one, and maybe this was temperature two. What we're also going to do is look backward. Okay, At the beginning of this lecture, we did a parameter estimation where we estimated the U value, the tau value, an alpha one, and an alpha two, and an ambient temperature. And that was done with batch data. But we also want to cover the case where we have Bayesian estimation, where we progress one step forward in time, and these become new measurements that we can use to update those parameters. And in fact, we'll have a string of prior measurements, okay, for our temperatures and our heater values going back in time, okay? And we're going to take that information with the new measurement each cycle to update these parameters and then we'll give those parameters to the controller for the next cycle and then it'll update the controller model and then you'll have a more accurate uh, representation of the system particularly in cases where there's going to be disturbances that you want to estimate or other things that are happening to the system that you didn't necessarily pick up on from the batch estimation. Okay, so that's it for this nonlinear model predictive control. Again, if you want to get a copy of this lab, uh, it's available that you can purchase or you can also uh, build it yourself. Okay, so there's just a little bit more information here from the temperature control lab page. And uh, let me see if I can find that. I think it's down and near the bottom. Okay, yeah, get temperature control lab. Select that button. Gives a little bit more information. There's a webinar presentation as well. And it shows what comes in that uh, box with the Arduino Uno and this shield that goes uh, over it. And then you plug it in, you're able to do the lab. Okay, there's the advanced control one. If you want to do the advanced control one, it has a more capable power supply. Uh, the one that comes with the PID control case is um, a little less capable, but you could still use it as well. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it on this lab. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, um, you know, running through this model predictive control case.